One of the earliest analog compressor designs was the optical, or opto compressor, and the most famous and most widely emulated opto compressor is the Teletronics LA-2A. This design employs a tube and transformer signal path for that nice analog warmth so prized in vintage gear, and provides a smooth, subtle compression characteristic. You can apply fairly large amounts of compression, 10 dB or more of gain reduction, and the signal still won't sound overly squashed, just fat and well controlled. This warm, smooth character has made the LA-2A many engineers' go-to compressor for vocals, although it's also excellent on bass and many other instruments. It may not be the unit you turn to for more dramatic compression effects, but it is one of the most musical compressors ever made. Originally introduced in the early 1960s, it's been reissued as a hardware unit by the same company that made the original, Universal Audio, and there are dozens of clones, both hardware and software, available nowadays. The graphics make it clear that Logic's compressor takes the LA-2A as the inspiration for its vintage Opto model. Now, a word on Logic's approach to modeling classic analog compressors. There are two ways to approach modeling analog gear. You can emulate every circuit in the original and design the virtual model's controls to respond exactly the way the original's knobs did, or do, with appropriately different control panels for each different unit modeled, right down to precise, photorealistic front panels in the plugins. Or you could design an emulation that captures the distinctive character of certain vintage hardware pieces without being that specific. The second approach is the one Logic's taken here with the various models and compressor. Although some models omit certain controls to assure a specific aspect of the original's character, for the most part, all the analog models share the same layout and control panel, and the knobs typically have the same range from model to model, which often exceeds the range of the knobs on the original hardware units. This allows you to get an even wider range of sounds and responses than the originals would have been capable of, but it also means that if you want to more closely emulate the behavior and response of a particular piece of analog gear, you have to have a little familiarity with the original's controls, the range of those controls, the values of settings that were not user-adjustable in the hardware unit, and the limitations of those original designs. As I go through the various analog models in Logic's compressor, I'll make note of those aspects. And the vintage Opto model is a good place to start, since the original hardware unit has only two knobs and a switch. Almost all aspects of a hardware LA-2A's response are determined by the internal circuitry, including the smooth compression characteristic it's so famous for. That smoothness comes courtesy of its program-dependent response, which is a function of the optical circuit used to control detection and compression. An optocompressor basically uses a light-based circuit as a detector. In the original design, and the Universal Audio reissues, it's an electroluminescent panel and photoresistor the T4 optical attenuator. As the signal increases, approaching and exceeding threshold, the light panel gradually glows brighter, and the photoresistor's impedance increases, resulting in gain reduction. The inherent response times of the optical circuit determine the attack and release characteristics of the compression, which vary with the incoming signal. This program-dependent behavior is the key to an optocompressor's typical smoothness. With the LA-2A, there are no user-adjustable settings for attack and release. The only two knobs are peak reduction, basically a threshold control, and gain, makeup gain. Since the design is heavily program dependent, the original has no ratio knob, but there is a compress limit switch that lets you choose between an approximate compression ratio of around 3 to 1 or 4 to 1, and a somewhat higher ratio for limiting. But remember, that is just an approximation. The program dependent optical circuitry and its soft knee characteristic mean that the ratio varies with the incoming signal level. Again, one of the keys to the LA-2A's smooth character. With the original, it's almost impossible to get a bad sound. You just dial up peak reduction until it sounds good, and then set the level with the gain control. With Logic's vintage Opto model, though, you can set the various controls, most of which were not present on the original, however you want including settings that'll result in a response that a real hardware optocompressor might not even be capable of. And of course, there's no reason you shouldn't do that. If it sounds good, it is good. But if you want to stick more closely to the behavior of the original, you might want to make settings that would correspond to the hardware unit's actual response. In that case, at set ratio to around 3 to 1 or 4 to 1, attack to around 10 milliseconds, and the knee to a soft knee characteristic, 
to most closely emulate the original's response. The hardware LA-2A's program-dependent release time varies considerably, faster at first, then slowing down up to as much as 5 seconds. I'd start with a slightly longer release time, maybe 100 to 250 milliseconds or so, and set to taste, making sure that the auto-release button is on. Since the all-tube and transformer design of the hardware gives it a subtle, desirable analog warmth, I'd also turn on the distortion feature in the output section, setting it to soft. Remember, once you've dialed up the compression amount and character you want, you can push the output into this virtual circuit with the makeup gain knob, and then compensate with the final output gain control. Of course, there are many other fine optocompressors besides the LA-2A, and some of them, especially more modern designs, do allow for a wider range of control settings, including faster attack times and a wider range of initial ratio choices. So don't hesitate to try other settings in the vintage optocompressor. You'll still get some of that optical compression character, but you'll also have a lot more flexibility once you get comfortable with the range of response the model is capable of. Here's Compressor's vintage opto model on a couple of tracks. I finally come to see who you really are Somebody that never got that far I finally come to see who you really are Somebody that never got that far Though your intentions may be true You never quite manage to follow through Next up, Compressors 2 FET models. <laughs> 